Chris, I think this is the first time we've talked to you since that game where Matt was banged up. How's he doing right now? Is he still day to day? Yeah, before Matt, I tell you what's really important for me to talk about the day is uh, Tim Jumper. Um, haven't had a chance to talk to you guys or really anybody about it. As a matter of fact, when um, when we heard the news of Jumps passing, um, Ole Miss, you know, putting out the press release, asked me did I want to have a quote, and I I literally sat down and tried to do it, uh, I mean couldn't, and so I think uh, Keith stepped up and had a quote that I thought was great, represented a lot of things that we're all feeling, and then I knew I'd have a chance to talk to you guys. But um, it's just a really sad day. As, um, so here's the deal with Jumper. Um, I had known a little bit about Jump as a player uh, because, as you guys know, he was one of the best players to ever play at Ole Miss. Mississippi guy, um, won state championships as a high school player. When you think of Ole Miss basketball, you know, you think of CSA and others. and um, Murph and those guys and Marshall, but Jump was a guy that I knew about even before I was coaching here. Um, so his legacy as a player is it's real, and it's not just real in this state. People know about Tim Jumper playing at Ole Miss, um, one of the best players to ever play in this league. When I got the job here, uh, the first day is always a whirlwind. Like I remember being in this building, press conference, and meeting with compliance, and phones ringing off the hook, um, and I had a chance to talk to Jumper. Jumper reached out to me, he texted me, he called me, and it wasn't just one text. Like he was pretty persistent about it. Uh, and I, I believe, um, I, th I think I'm 100% factual here. I talked to Tim Jumper the day that I got the job here, uh, which is really hard to talk to everybody on that day. And I'll never forget the conversation. It was quick and to the point. You know, he said things like, hey, I know you're busy. I'm going to see you face to face soon. But he just kept saying, man, I love Ole Miss. Um, and when you think about Jumper, and I'm sure I speak for every coach that he played for and those after, whether it was AK or Kermit or all of us, you know, Jumper loved Ole Miss. He loved Ole Miss basketball. He loved Ole Miss. He was a fixture at Ole Miss football games, weekends in Oxford. Um, and what developed was just a friendship, you know, a, a friendship that I wasn't necessarily looking for. And I don't can't speak for Jump, but I don't know if he was looking for it. But sometimes in life, you just kind of click with somebody. Um, and I don't think a week went by. Um, from the day we got the job until earlier this week when he passed, um, that we didn't talk. Uh, we talked about our team, recruiting, Ole Miss, and then we talked about life. He was one of those guys that always asked me about my daughters every time we spoke. And so huge loss personally, because simply stated, he was one of my new real friends, and I don't use that word lightly, you know, in Mississippi. Um, personal relationship with several of the guys on our team. Um, everybody on our team knew him. When he walked in the building for practice or games, it kind of lightened up the room. So our prayers and thoughts are with his family, um, his son, um, his, his parents, um, the people that he worked with. Jump was a highly successful person after Ole Miss. You guys know he was an all-academic SEC player, one of the best players in this league, and he had a really bright future going. Um, a lot of things still related to basketball and in the business that Jump did. So we miss Jump. Our prayers and thoughts are – with his family, and um, it was just a huge, huge loss for Ole Miss basketball. So I uh, appreciate you guys letting me talk about my relationship with Jump today. Your question was about Matt. Um, Matt continues to uh, progress. Um, I don't know if day-to-day -day is the way I call it, maybe two-day to two-day, if there's a such thing like that. So um, we'll see how Matt feels later today. Um, don't want to tell you that he won't play Saturday and all of a sudden he shows up, but I would say, you know, um, what's the one below probable? Doubtful, is that the word? Probably doubtful for Saturday, although I never underestimate something Matt Morell can do physically. Um, but he's, he's improving, uh, just trying to get healthy this time of year. So uh, we, we need Matt to have the best year he's ever had in the SEC, and he's had some good ones. Um, so right now I'd say kind of day to day, if that makes sense. Do you feel like you've got roles maybe mapped out now a month into the season where you got four more non conference and it's probably going to be a fluid thing, but just baseline, do you feel like you got roles figured out? Yeah, I think we've got them mapped out. Now it's a matter of executing it. You know, like you put a plan on paper, whether it's basketball or life or business or whatever, then everybody's got to feel good about the plan. Nobody can be fighting the plan. Everybody has to believe in the plan. Then you have to go execute it. I would say, in my opinion, our players' hearts and minds are in the right place. Um, now it's time to start executing the plan. So, you know, first thing with roles is we need everybody to be a defensive player. We need everybody to be a defensive rebounder in their own way. And 
So we spend a lot of time with our players emphasizing that. Um, then on the offensive side of the ball, we have a lot of guys that can do a lot of different things. So a part of the role is time and score, what's going on with our team. A um, great example would be, you know, offensively, we have enough talent where there's some good shots for our team on maybe one pass, zero pass. Um, there's some non-paint touch shots for our team that are high percentage shots. But championships are won through the paint. And I think our ability to understand, you know, shot selection isn't just based on I can make that shot. It's based on time, score, what's going on with the game. Um, another big thing in basketball, in my opinion, is getting to the free throw line. We've always had a very clear goal that we would like to make more free throws than the other team attempts. Um, lofty goal, uh, but it seems to be when we can get that done on a stat sheet, um, we're pretty hard to beat. So I would say in terms of mapped out and communicated and everybody be on the same page, the roles are in a pretty good place. Now it, it's time to start executing it. Um, so that's where we are in our journey. Kind of a two-parter. One, obviously, looking into Southern Miss, we know kind of about that matchup or what to make of it. And secondly, was that – you know, a particular game that was kind of predetermined before you got here, or did that kind of come about when you arrived? No, this series is um, is is on on us. Um, Jay Ladner, the coach of Southern Miss, is a friend. We played his teams before, um, Southeastern Louisiana, I, I think. Um, he's always had like a championship team, so we played his teams earlier. I think when we were at Texas Tech, and it was the battle we were looking for. Jay's teams are well coached. They have an identity on both sides of the floor, and they always compete in their conference for championships and NCAA tournament bids. Um, I think, what, two seasons ago, it might have been one of the best seasons in Southern Miss uh, basketball history. So it starts with, um, you know, we're trying, to, we're trying to find opportunities and scheduling for our team to get better, and Jay's teams will get you better. Secondly, I think it's good for basketball in the state of Mississippi. And uh, we mentioned this before, I think that one of the responsibilities of the head coach here um, is to what's good for basketball in Mississippi. Grassroots basketball, high school basketball, junior college basketball, college basketball at all levels. So um, a lot of sneaky tradition in this state with basketball. So I think the Ole Miss, Southern Miss game is something the fans enjoy. Um, and so I think it's good for basketball. This game, the ability to play on the coast, we have a lot of alumni and Ole Miss fans on the coast in that area. It's also a cool place for fans to go take a weekend road trip um, so I thought last year, the first game, I think both fan bases um, enjoyed it, benefited. We had a very first good first year crowd. And uh, the, the expectations for Saturday is for it to even be better attendance than last year. Are you, where do you get what you're expecting a morning out of Bolt? I know this is still early in his career, but kind of where do you, are you where you wanted to see him progressing at this stage? Yeah, John's doing well. Um, when I say that, I mean he's embracing each day. He's made some strides in the weight room, the film room, academically, uh, off the court, just continuing to grow into the young man he is. And basketball is no different. Um, as a matter of fact, this morning's practice, um, in my opinion, was as well as John's played um, in a long time consistently, made some active plays on defense and scored the ball on offense. So, you know, John's one of those guys, just like all of our players, we encourage to run your own race. And obviously, the, the report card of a game day stat sheet is what everybody looks at. But in reality, you know, what's more important is John's future and getting better each day. Um, while he does that, he's also going to make Ole Miss better each day. So um, John's working hard. He's deserving of more game opportunity. When he gets those minutes, you know, I'm confident he'll take advantage of them. Um, but to answer the question, he's doing well. It's just, uh, it's, you know, it's really hard to play as a freshman in college basketball on a top 25 team. Um, and John, John's right there. You know, we, um, we need him to have a contribution this season. I'm confident he will. And certainly in the future, it doesn't take, you know, a really, really smart guy to, to just see that this guy could be special if he continues to improve on a day-to-day -day basis. Similar question about Clafke. He, he's played some big minutes for you, too. Where's he at in, in this progression, and how much have you seen him grow in six weeks? Yeah, very similar answer to John. It's all about day-to-day -day improvement day-to-day -day victories, don't get too high or too low. Klafke obviously benefited from uh, last year, him able to come here second semester, you know, graduate in high school early, kind of like the football model. And so I think, I um, don't want to speak for Klafke, but that was a big thing in his development. Probably puts him a little bit ahead of the curve and some other freshmen around the country because he was able to practice, you know, for six months last spring. Um, but no, Klafke's doing well. I think, um, 
you know, is playing hard to impact each possession on defense and offense. And obviously the intangibles that I think the Ole Miss fan base are starting to pick on pretty quickly is this guy's a special personality, his enthusiasm, his edge. Um, you know, it kind of bleeds into the team and even in the crowd. So, you know, call it a Marshall Henderson type energy. Um, you know, it, it, Klafke is doing a really good job for us right now as a young player. And just like John Bowl, you know, the future's bright for these two guys as they continue to run their own race. What is it about Dre that attracts the teammates to him to do what, like we just talked about, to, for a new guy that went here a year ago? Yeah, with Dre, it's, uh, it's consistency as a person. Um, as a teammate, as a, as a friend, as a competitor, as a player. Um, he's not perfect, nor am I, but he is a pretty consistent guy. You kind of know what you can get. I think another thing with Dre is you can coach him hard. Um, there's not a lot of feelings involved. You know, just uh, simply stated straight to the point. You know, as a coach, like you, you can say some things to Dre in a manner that you maybe can't say to other players, and Dre can handle it. He wants it. And what that does is it gives him a level of respect and a platform with his teammates. Because as a coach, any coach will tell you this, if you can coach your best players hard and not have to worry about this or that, like just, hey, this is the information, this is the standard, this is the expectation, um, then, you, then your team always has a chance. On the flip side, if you can't coach your best players hard, you're, you're trying to, you know, you're, you're going for fifth place. Um, and so with Dre and Matt and other guys like that, um, Dre's just a consistent guy. Um, off the court, you know, his, his daughter, he mentioned that. Um, Dre, Dre's a guy that knows his priorities. You know, it's his faith, it's his family. And his family, it's obviously his daughter. And um, then basketball is, is the next priority. And I think when you have that kind of clarity and consistency in life, people, like, bleed to you. People are, are attracted to you. So Dre's a really good player. A lot of people know that. Um, we recruited him to be more than a player, though. We recruited him to be one of those guys who can help us flip this program in terms of expectations, mentality, day-to-day -day consistency. Um, and even though we're a third of the season through, I would, I would think that Dre's off to a pretty good start. I'm just curious. Um, Malik Diaz started each of the last nine games, but the minutes haven't you know, been like what Sean and Matt had doing. Is he working back from something, or is that his minutes just more just kind of the flow of the game of the last nine games? No, I think um, – I mean, with D.A., he's one of the top minute guys on our team. This team, in my mind, has, you know, seven starters. We've been playing eight, nine guys in rotation, trying to get those extra guys. Um, a couple of games that D.A. got in foul trouble early, that probably affected the overall minutes a little bit. Um, and then it's just his quest to continue to improve. Um, but we need D.A. to be a, a full-time player. We need, be, we need D.A. to be a guy that can start the game and finish the game. Uh, and he's working hard towards that. And I'm just curious, you mentioned Marshall Henderson's names earlier. You talk about Jim Jumper kind of welcoming you to Ole Miss. Was Marshall one of those guys? I guess what was your kind of first interaction with him? You obviously had him on the fireside chat early on. What was that like? It's disappointed. Kind of have a high opinion of you in terms of like research and following this team. So um, I recruited Marshall Henderson to Texas Tech when I was an assistant for Coach Knight. Marshall then went to Utah. Marshall transferred from Utah to Texas Tech, where I was now working for Pat Knight. And so I coached Marshall. We had a relationship. Um, Marshall went to South Plains to play for one of my good friends, Steve Green. They won the national championship. Um, and then Marshall chose to come to Ole Miss uh, to play for AK. And I, I supported that. I'm not saying I'm the reason he came here, but I supported that. I had a relationship with Marshall at that time and Coach Green and uh, Marshall's dad, who was a great high school coach. And so I've kind of been a part of Marshall's life from when he's about 16 years to now. So we have a relationship. Um, so I, I knew Marshall before coming to Ole Miss. I met Jumper through Ole Miss. Uh, Marshall's been great. Marshall's one of those guys that, um, just like Jump, really similar. When he comes in the building, everybody knows he's here and everybody's excited about that. Um, both guys, too, Jumper and Marshall, have some humility about him. Um, Marshall doesn't come in here reminding everybody how good a player he was. He's just kind of a normal guy. Um, and I thought Jump had those same qualities, too. Did you, did you not know that I coached Marshall Henderson? Yeah, I just slipped my mind. That's OK, bud. OK, can I, can I talk to you like I talked to Dre, or do I need to be worried about your feelings? Nah, I'm good. I like it, man. I like it. And so uh, game, game time change on our game before uh, Christmas. I think we're playing it at 4 o'clock now, and it was 6. So just really trying to get that word out there so we don't have a lot of people with excuses that they didn't know. So appreciate y'all helping us with that. Four o'clock on December 22nd, is that what it is?
21st. That means we got a longer Christmas break this year. That's good news. Yeah, Saturday, December 21st, we play at 4 o'clock, not 6 o'clock. All right, appreciate you guys.